Hello everyone and welcome to Armonia Seminary. Earlier this week, I asked a question inspired by an anime I am re-watching called Naruto Shippuden. The question was, if you look at a chessboard, what pieces could a Jedi be represented by? And which one should a Jedi never be represented by, if there are any pieces? And can you use the Jedi compass to justify your answer? So for each person that considers the board, your answers will vary based on your understanding of what each piece represents. But to understand my answer, I'm going to have to give you a little bit of background on the relevance that Naruto has on this subject. So during a filler arc, Shikamaru Nara and his mentor As Asuma Saratobi, uh, Asuma, sorry, engage in a game of shogi which is a Japanese variant of chess. A little interesting tidbit that I learned was that the current oldest archaeological find of shogi pieces is from a dig in the Nara prefecture, which corresponds with Shikamaru's last name. And uh, <laughs> Shikamaru always won. So anyways, while playing this game of shogi with Shikamaru, Asuma asked the question, who is the king of Konoha? Now, Konoha, so for those of you that don't actually know, is the name of the village that they are part of. It's um, it's basically where Naruto grows up. It's where Shikamaru grows up. And they're all supposed to be there to protect everybody. And it's this town within the Fire Nation. And the, the, the two, if you look at it from Japanese history, then the Hokage would be represented by the Shogunate and the... Fire Nation King, the feudal lord, actually, would be represented of the emperor. If you want to go learn some more history about Japan, that's a pretty good place to start. So anyways, this question of who is the king of Konoha ends up being paramount to a problem within this, this arc that technically started like before Naruto actually became a show. So like prequel Naruto. And how it goes is Asuma joined an elite guard that was meant to protect the king of the Fire Nation. But while he was on the team, one of his friends became obsessed with ensuring the Fire Nation's feudal lord had success, and he kind of wanted to take out the Hokage of Konoha. It doesn't help that the Hokage is Asuma's father, so when the feudal lord told, told him that he was not up for taking out the Hokage, then Asuma turned against his friend. So although the Hokage and the Lord were a harmonious match, basically Asuma's friend believed it was only a matter of time before the current or a future Hokage seized power from the Lord themselves. However, the answer to the question of who the king is kind of took a different philosophical term, or turn. And it wasn't so much is it the Hokage or the Feudal Lord? But we'll get to that here in a minute. So now, if you're looking on a so, uh, shogi board, just as the case with chess, which is why I use chess instead of shogi, a lot more people can relate to chess in my audience, when the king is no longer capable of being defended the or defending himself, the game's over. So just who is the king? Knowing where this question stems from hopefully will help you better understand how to participate in this discussion and my answer. So let's begin from the top about pawns. Every piece on the board is meant to protect the king. There isn't a single piece in the game that should be wasted, even if the pawn has to be sacrificed. That sacrifice should never be in vain. In real life, we could look at these people who get sacrificed as martyrs. But even then, a martyr must be strategically in a position to be sacrificed for the greater good of the king's well-being. A wasted sacrifice can be the difference between protecting the king and losing the king. In this, a Jedi must not be reckless with their position and absolutely can be a pawn. In life, I would represent pawns as people who work in the community service oriented systems and in things like activism, be them volunteer or by career, except in the case of law enforcement or judiciary systems, which I will get to later. Next, we'll move to the bishop. 
given their restriction to diagonal movements alone, I can assign this role to the government offices such as Congress, the mayor, the, the governor, um, and I'm going to use American terminology because that's what I understand the most. I'm not going to sit there and try to explain to you how Parliament works. I don't actually get it. So anyways, some Jedi would tell you that working in these systems uh, would definitely put you at a disadvantage being a Jedi and that Jedi shouldn't be working in them anyway because absolute power corrupts. It's not hard to see where that comes from. Personally, I disagree. And I believe that a Jedi with strong integrity, strong integrity, would work in their role and accomplish great things for their community. And so I would, I would support somebody as long as I believe that they had strong integrity. But, you know, yeah, voting works. All right. Going to the Rook. The Rook has a bit more freedom. But it, too, is restricted in how it can move in the sense that it can only move when it's necessary to move. Otherwise, it could make some problems. But it's very good at being there to make you wonder, wait, is that one coming after me? Hmm. I don't know. And while you're focused on it, you might not notice anybody else. At least, that's been one of my problems when I play. I'm not very good at chess. I won't lie. My uh, mentor tried teaching me it, and every time we played, I lost. And I had all the time in the world, too. That's the worst part. Like, we would have our own little boards out, and we would play it, and I would lose. Yeah, I'm terrible at it. I've never won a single chess match. And I almost got to w win one, but the person saw it and didn't let me know until after the game was done. He was like, yeah, you had me, like, right there, and you didn't see it. Yep, I'm terrible. Anyways, so in order to move appropriately to protect the king, the rook's movements have to be appropriate for what's best to the board. This piece I would assign to the military. In the real world, I've encountered Jedi that believe serving in the military goes against the Jedi path because they feel all Jedi should be conscientious objectors. While I can understand the sentiment, I find that this answer completely rejects the reality of our fictional counterparts, but probably more so I'm also in a disagreement because I feel that it's short-sighted and based on a misconception of how Western military organizations try to try to work um, and how, how much autonomy that a, an individual person can have in making ethical decisions. So, eh. But I recognize that it's still there. And I also have a bias. I was in the military. I get to see it firsthand. It's just me. So the knight... The knight has flexibility, and it's useful to dealing with complex problems. Its capabilities, I'm going to award the position of law enforcement systems and judiciary systems. Again, this group fits nicely into the Jedi path, and thus a Jedi can fulfill this role. Now, that doesn't mean you won't get backlash. Obviously, in America right now, there is a lot of problems with police brutality. But, you know, if we had more people that were actually Jedi, or at least close to following the Jedi philosophy in the police force, we probably wouldn't have these problems. But it is what it is. Moving to the Queen. We see in the Queen a piece that can move anywhere on the board. It's an extremely powerful piece, and it can go into the enemy encampment. However, it can also get turned against you pretty fast when the Queen gets taken out. You can also make more Queens. Uh though that's really difficult to get to. Um, at least for me it is. I don't know about a skilled person when it comes to that. Maybe I probably should study a little bit more chess so I can beat somebody in the future. <laughs> Anyways, so the queen, I'm going to give it an abstract concept rather than one that's a tangible choice of career. We'll assign it public opinion. Public opinion is something that can be turned against you. It can be uh, it can be used in your advantage. You can get it into the enemy camp, etc. Right? So we're going to call this public opinion. Now, a Jedi can certainly participate in public opinion. But most weigh their opinion and how they assert it against the Jedi path. And that is like the only way that you can really do it. So... 
either you decide to not participate in public opinion or you decide to participate in it. It kind of depends on how you do things. You can do that, exercise that with your right, or you can exercise that with your social network. So who's the king? Now we're the king. Who is the king? Who, who is supposed to be protected? I've named off like everybody except the president, which I don't think actually fits on the board. It's uh, unless you want to put him in the government position. I kind of feel like the king has a lot less power, but or the president has a lot less power than what we tend to give him. We think he has all this power, but really I, he doesn't. Um, and it's just us assigning that to him. So just like a, a king on the board, it doesn't seem like he has a lot of power. But the thing is, is that we don't really protect the president unless that's our specific job. So who is the king? Well, at the end of the story arc, Shikamaru reveals that the king is the children of Konoha. Yeah, some of you are going to be like, oh, whatever, that's so... Oh, I don't even know the word, but you're just kind of like, ugh, right? But, I mean, it really works in the analogy, because that's, all these systems are there to protect the, to protect people. So I'm going to expand that definition to the citizens of a community. So, to this end, knowing and understanding who the king is, I have to say that based on my understanding of the Jedi Compass, specifically with the core ethic of duty to all, which I personally believe is one of the most important pieces in uh, tenets in the Jedi Compass, that the one role we should not fulfill is the role of the king. So let me tie this to the movies. In the movies, the Jedi were active participants in protecting others. The king is a passive participant, which is kind of there, and he moves for the purpose of survival alone. Um, that's not to say that it's a bad thing, uh, that people just want to live their lives. Let them live their lives. We're just there to make it better. Everybody else on the board's there to make it better for the king to be able to live the life, right? So the Jedi of the movies had different ways of accomplishing this, and they could impact individuals in profound ways while still accomplishing their missions. So perhaps the most powerful way to convey the Jedi's role within society and to prove my point was relayed by the words of Mace Windu in Matthew Stover's book, Shatterpoint. Jedi do not fight for peace. That's only a slogan. And as misleading as slogans always are, Jedi fight for civilization because only civilization creates peace. We fight for justice because justice is the fundamental bedrock of civilization. An unjust civilization is built upon sand and it does not long survive a storm. I hope you guys enjoyed listening to my breakdown. Now it's your turn to join the conversation. You can join it by going into the comments below or one of the links provided in the summary section. Which roles do you see the pieces as being? It doesn't have to necessarily be the way I look at it. And which ones do you think the Jedi path fits with? And finally, which piece do you think you want to be? Or even which one are you now? Can't wait to hear your answers. I hope to talk with you guys soon.